Let us teach the New Testament. First Epistle of John, Lesson 3, 1 John 2, verses 3 through 11. In this third of 15 lessons on the New Testament book of 1 John, we shall look at the following 10 matters. By this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments. Whoever says, I know him, but does not keep his commandments, is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoever keeps his word, in him truly the love of God is perfected. By this we may know that we are in him, whoever says he abides in him, ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. Beloved, I am writing you no new commandment, but an old commandment that you had from the beginning. The old commandment is the word that you have heard. At the same time, it is a new commandment that I am writing to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. Whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light, and in him there is no cause for stumbling. But whoever hates his brother is in the darkness and walks in the darkness, and does not know where he is going, because the darkness has blinded his eyes. In 1 John 2.6, some early Greek manuscripts read, ought to walk in the same way in which he walked, whilst others read, more simply, ought to walk as he walked. The first reading inserts an emphatic adverb, hutos, which means thusly. Now, did a scribe supply this adverb for emphasis, or did a scribe omit it by mistake? Because it sounds like the preceding pronoun autos, meaning he. Although it remains hard to know which was original, the meaning of the sentence remains the same. You may download from one John dot cura dot download a list of 11 minor variants from 1 John 2, 3 through 11. This outline of 1 John 2, 3 through 11 for preachers and teachers derives from a discourse analysis of the linguistic data of the text, rather than from systematic theology or for a preacher's need of an alliterated outline. Because John's readers were familiar with him, his manner of speaking, and his Gospel of John, they were comfortable with his phrases such as keeping commandments, knowing God, abiding in him, Jesus' new commandment, light and darkness, and the danger of disobedience. From the first century of the Christian era, followers of Jesus, commonly referred to each other as brother or sister, and together as the brethren. So a brother is another member of a Christian community. Now, in spoken English, in Western countries, the term hate generally suggests strong personal feelings which might drive one to irrational behavior. In traditional honor-shame societies, such as that of first-century Semitic society, 
To hate means to hold someone in disfavor, to be disinclined towards them, or have very little regard for others. Hence, you could translate the term disfavor, disregard, anyway, in contrast with preferential treatment. John uses two verbs meaning to know in his first epistle. He employs the verb gnosko some 14 times. This verb normally relates to familiarity acquired through experience or association with persons or things. John also employs another verb oida some 12 times. This verb normally relates to information that one has acquired from others. You may obtain from the download site a list of all the verses containing these two verbs. John's verb to perfect does not mean to attain total mastery or sinless perfection, but rather to complete an activity, to finish, or to accomplish a purpose. You may obtain a fuller list of terms and their definitions from the download site. The Greek text of 1 John 2, 3 through 11, begins with the connective word chi, translated and. Although this is the most common Greek connector or conjunction, when it occurs at the start of a new section, as it does here, it connects the entire section to a previous one. Thus, 2, 3 through 11 connects with 1, 5 through 2, 2, continuing the theme of God is light and in him is no darkness at all. So compare chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. The Greek phrase en tuto, translated by this, occurs 11 times in 1 John. It signals to readers that the sentence consists of an effect and its cause. The Greek pattern equals by his, followed by an effect, such as to know or to manifest, then by its cause in a clause, sometimes a conditional clause. That is, the cause is in the following clause or sentence. The phrase ek tutu, by that, occurs once in 1 John. It signals to readers that the cause is to be found in the preceding sentence. Since some versions translate ek tutu the same as en tuto, some readers have been confused about what was the cause of a sentence's effect. Download from 1 John, Kura Download, a complete list of these verses containing en tuto and ek tutu. If you speak more than one language, then you know that verb tenses can have very different functions in one language compared to another. Greek verb tenses seldom describe time, that is, past, present, or future. Rather, they express aspect, that is, how speakers or writers viewed actions or states in relation to themselves or to their readers. Uh, 1 John employs the following tenses. The aorist tense describes an action or state as a whole, saying nothing about when it did, does, or will happen. Thus, the darkness has blinded or blinds his eyes. The present tense describes an action or a state that is ongoing or habitual. If we habitually keep his commandments. The perfect tense describes lasting effects of an action that has happened, such as, we have come to know him and still know him. The imperfect tense describes an action or a state that was happening or was habitual, such as 
an old commandment that you had or have had from the beginning. The future tense describes an action or a state that follows another action. When he appears, we shall be like him. First John 2 verse 3 reads, And by this we know that we have come to know him, if we keep his commandments bringing together several points made earlier in this lesson and in previous lessons. And signals that this verse starts a new section by connecting it back to chapter 1, 5 through 2, 2, continuing the theme of light and darkness. By this we know signals that the effect we know results from its cause if we keep his commandments. The verb to know is gnosko, occurring twice in this clause. We know is in the present tense, and we have come to know in the perfect tense. Since gnosko is the verb of knowing by experience, John is reminding readers that they know God by experiencing him and his promises which include the new birth, communion with God, assurance, the indwelling Holy Spirit, and overcoming evil. If we keep, the strength of our knowing that we have come to know God remains conditional on our obedience to his commandments, as signaled by the second-class conditional particle eon, followed by a present tense subjunctive verb. If we should keep on keeping his commandments, obedience remains a choice, a choice that brings satisfying results. John's teaching clearly harkens back to Jesus' own promise recorded in the Gospel of John 14.21, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you truths, principles, and patterns in 1 John that can help you and those whom you teach. For example, from the current passage, here are four proofs or evidence of who are true Christians. Note these six characteristics of the new commandment, to love one another. Churches that are growing and multiplying always empower ordinary believers to obey at least these seven basic commandments of Jesus. Love God, love your neighbor, love the brethren, and love your enemies. Repent believe the good news, and receive the Holy Spirit. Baptize new believers in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Pray to God in my name. Remember my death. Give freely. And go make disciples of every nation. See six dangers from these verses for fake Christians. Obtain from the download site a document on knowing God. In 1 John, knowing God is a personal experience. It begins by being born again and enjoying communion with God. We gain great assurance before God, and the Holy Spirit dwells with us. We learn to overcome evil and we take pleasure in obeying Jesus' commandments. Here are three more historic Christian doctrines that you can teach anywhere, from 1 John 2, 3 through 11. The Word of God. God has spoken words through angels, prophets, and whispers. God has spoken as the Son in human flesh, Jesus spoke the Father's words, and his apostles have written his words in the New Testament. 
We Christians preach and teach from God's Word, the Bible. The Law of God God spoke long ago individual commandments to Adam, to Noah, and to Abraham. To Moses, God revealed his Ten Commandments. Then God gave to Israel some 613 commandments, together called the Law of God. When Jesus came, however, he said, If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Keeping God's law brings blessing to a nation, but does not earn eternal life. Imitation of Christ Mature Christians lead their life by imitating Jesus. They seek to please God, to remain joyful, to show kindness to others, to pray often, to speak truth, to serve freely, to suffer willingly, to forgive enemies, and to die with hope. In small groups and house churches, after someone or several have read 1 John 2, 3-11, pose the following queries and allow anyone to reply. What did you learn from this passage about God? About Jesus? About obedience to Jesus? About sin? Discuss or recommend ways in which to apply or implement the teaching you give. Perhaps memorize seven commandments of Jesus. Create, sing, or teach a song about Jesus' basic commandments. Discuss ways in which to obey each commandment. Lay plans to implement each commandment in your congregations, your house churches, your small groups, and in families. Identify needy individuals and families in your congregation or other congregations, then lay plans to meet those needs or to empower others to meet those needs. Download the document for this lesson at onejohn.cura.download. Read five times 1 John 2 verses 12 through 17 before you view the next video lesson. Please leave comments or queries or write to me at the download site. I shall try to reply to you by email or online.